Prayer is an opening of our hearts to our Father. It's a raising of our minds and our souls to the Creator of the universe. We join with the Son, with Jesus, to see His Kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. There's an often repeated saying, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. Jesus tethers his most audacious promises to it. Can we too learn to have a deep communion with our Father, witnessing a radical reviving work in our lives, our churches, and our world? Welcome to week three in our series on prayer. Tonight we're going to look at the blockages to prayer. Have you ever felt like prayer is a struggle? If you have, you are definitely not alone. I kind of had a go at writing down honestly some of the things that might stop us from praying. Have you ever felt like you don't know the right words or the right way to pray? Have you ever wondered if there's a certain posture that you need to be in to pray, kneeling or bowing, eyes closed or hands folded? Have you ever felt like you're just too busy doing things to actually make time to pray? Have you ever thought why God doesn't answer prayer? Why are there some prayers he answers and some prayers he, he doesn't? If you've ever found your mind wandering to those things, even while you're trying to pray, you're not alone. Jesus has made a way for us to be in relationship with him. God invites us into relationship. Prayer is that invitation into that relationship. Everyone knows that communication is essential for relationship. And prayer is that communication for us in relationship with God. Think about a friendship where you've been really close to someone. Did you ever have to make up rules about what you could say and what you couldn't say, when you could call and when you couldn't call? You were there for each other. You welcomed those conversations and communications. You just wanted to be close and share your heart with that person. Well, it's like that with God too for us. He wants to be invited into our lives. He wants to hear what's going on for us. He wants to help us in our problems, in our messes. He wants to lead us and show us and tell us amazing things. He wants to know that his heart is for us. He delights in his children. Is that the kind of relationship you feel with God? If you don't, then the problem is not sitting with God here. The problem sits with us. And this week we want to take an honest look in some of those things which sit as blockages or barriers to that kind of relationship with God. The first one we look at tonight is busyness. It would have to be a blockage for most of us or many of us. Many of us would say we're too busy to fit prayer into our schedule. Maybe you're in a season right now where you do get to spend lots of time praying. I am sure you're blessed to do that. Keep doing that. I encourage that. But for others of us, when we read about Jesus escaping to mountaintops and away from crowds and spending hours in prayer, did he really know what it was like to be up during the night to children? Do you know what it was like to have all these deadlines to meet? Do you know what it was like to be stressed out in the crazy busyness of life where the next thing is always calling our attention? It's hard to be still and know God. But God wants to come near to us. And, and the shortest prayer that we cry out to him still counts as prayer. Those moments when you cry out, Jesus, God, help me, that counts as prayer. Psalm 145 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to all who call on him in truth. When you make those cries from your heart, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, God hears you. You can come to God right there. In a sleepless night, driving in your car, in a line waiting for your coffee, you can pray and God will meet you right there. One of the other blockages to prayer is often that we think we have to be self-sufficient and self-reliant in our relationship with God. You know, as little kids, we needed our parents, didn't we? 
They pretty much did everything for us. But there was this expectation that as we grew older, we needed to, and we're expected to, to grow up to be independent adults. That was a good thing for us when we were children, to grow up and be independent. But our Heavenly Father always sees us as his children. We are children coming into this relationship with God, and we never stop being his children. He actually delights us coming to him. He never gets tired of hearing from us. He never whinges when we come into his presence with another need. I think it's our pride that gets in the way of us coming to him as little children to receive the kingdom of God as he intended it. Whoever or whatever you feel like you have to live up to or be in other relationships, you don't have to do that with God. Your heavenly father loves you just as you are. Another blockage to consider as you meet together in groups this week is is a sense of being spiritually dry, maybe times where God feels distant. What Jesus did on the cross made it possible for us to come into relationship with God. He overcame the barrier of our sin. When we receive his grace and forgiveness, relationship with our Heavenly Father is ours. But sin still exists in our lives. We still have this flesh nature that is prone to sin. And sometimes we get stuck there or we hold on to sin. The Bible talks about harboring sin against God or against others. That actually creates this blockage, creates this distance. The distance that comes means our hearts are misaligned with God's heart and it just causes this rift for us. You know, even back in the Garden of Eden, we saw this happen. Sin came in and the human response to sin was to hide in shame. It was to pretend it didn't happen or it was to blame someone else. When we do that, we struggle to come into God's presence. It holds God at arm's length. He is not withdrawing from us. Repentance is a gift to us from God. It is the path of humility that leads us back to our Saviour, who is always there with arms open and ready to receive us, to pour out forgiveness and grace when we come to him. God didn't wait for humanity to be perfect before he sent Jesus. Jesus entered into imperfect humanity, into our mess. He wasn't put off by it or frightened by it. He meets us there. In the story of the prodigal son, it took so much for that son to even comprehend what it would be to take that distance, to cover that distance, to come back home to his father. And yet what was the father's response? The father was watching and waiting for that son to return, runs to meet him, showers him with hugs and kisses, treats him as no less than the son he is. This is the heart of the father. Sin is no obstacle to prayer because God welcomes repentant sinners. We don't need to be perfect to pray. The final blockage I want us to think about in our groups is when our prayers are unanswered or when God seems silent when we pray. We question whether it is worth praying at these times. It's easy for us to doubt God's power and his love or both of those things. I'm sure that every one of us has at least one area in our life where God seems conspicuously absent or silent. What is that for you? Many of us can harden our hearts towards God over the pain of not understanding what he's doing and who he is in those times. You know, I think it is helpful for us to see that even Jesus experienced this. Have you ever thought about that? If we look at Matthew chapter 26 in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is crying out in anguish to his father. He says, my father, if it is possible, surely Jesus would have known that it was, If it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. 
Then on the cross, just hours later, Jesus cries out in anguish again, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? There is no response from God to these prayers of Jesus. And yet we know that what God unfolded here was ultimately for our good. It would be nice if God was like a computer operating system designed to deliver predictable results based on the buttons we push. But God is not like that. He gives us space, though, to come before him, to hold before him the things we don't understand. In his teaching in, on the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus talks about prayer. He says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Tyler Statton talks about this passage and says that asking is about having the freedom to come before God and make our requests to him. Need often drives us to pray. It's often when we feel weak and fragile and vulnerable and in need of help. It's almost instinctive at those times to turn to God, to ask for his help. But then the second verb, seeking, is about positioning ourselves towards God. Jesus tells us to ask, and it's often in our asking that we come to God, but it turns into discovering this relationship with him. The greatest gift we could know in our asking is actually the gift of receiving the giver himself. Thirdly, Jesus talks about knocking. And this conjures up an image of fellowship around a table. Maybe you knocked on the door to where you're at tonight. You weren't left outside. You're invited in. And in Hebrew culture, being invited in around a table demonstrates this acceptance and dignity and equality. It's the truest form of intimacy to be invited in to share a meal together. Jesus was criticised, wasn't he, for breaking bread with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners, but only by those who didn't understand that the heart of the Father in heaven is to welcome us all into his presence. He wants us to be seen by him, known by him, be delighted by him as we meet with him as we experience his heart and his love for us. There are two things the Bible says God collects. The first is in Revelations 5 and 8 where God talks about holding our prayers in golden bowls. They'll be poured out in his perfect time, in his way. The second thing, in Psalm 56, God says he collects our tears. God hears our prayers. God sees our heartache and he is not indifferent to them. In Jesus' parable of the persistent widow in Luke 18, he closes with a verse that assures us that God is just and he will bring about his justice. And then he asks this question, but when the son of man returns to earth, will he find men and women of faith? I read this quote this week. The subtext of every miracle, the soundtrack beneath the life of every saint is a defiant and courageous choice in the face of the dark experience of God's absence and silence to say, I choose to trust. Will we be the people still praying when Jesus returns? The ones who are asking and seeking and knocking in faith. So will you pray? The barrier to prayer, the greatest barrier is is often just getting around to doing it. Why don't you have a go at it now? It can feel awkward and uncomfortable at the beginning. It's a choice just to do it anyway. But as we experience the intimacy of relationship with God, we fall in love with him. We want to spend more time with him. And prayer becomes the greatest blessing.